Hello and welcome to the what is it? What's my show? The Happy Insights Podcast. My name is Happy Ali, and this is season three, episode two. And today we're going to talk about information in the atmosphere. Now I'm really excited and nervous about this episode. I'm excited because of the topic because. Although a lot of spiritual people already know about this concept, I noticed a lot of people that I talk to have never heard of the concept. And it is about the information that is available to us in the Earth's atmosphere. And it's not necessarily just energetic. It's also electromagnetic. And it's just stuff that we have access to. Now, it's important to know about this topic because... It might help you take a leap of faith in some of your ideas and do something with it. So this particular episode might really help you take a step into something amazing that you've been thinking about. And uh, I'm nervous because I did not plan out how I was going to talk about this episode. Usually I have an outline and I kind of know what I'm going to say. This time, I don't know because I'm relying on information to come to and through me as we speak. Now, as you know, this season is all about intuition and receiving information from within. And in different episodes, I'm going to talk about where information comes from and how to receive it. But this one is a really simple one. And I'm going to tell you how it works. OK, so the Earth itself is a living being. And it is part of a web of consciousness that is our galaxy, that is the universe. And it's all alive and it all thinks and it all has a specific frequency and it matures. So as the earth is maturing, new things are required for us to do to help its maturation, even though sometimes those things seem to take us backwards, like the invention of plastic or other things that are very hurtful to the planet. But all of those things help propel us forward in some way. They either inspire us to move forward in some way, or they pull us back or show us the darkness of what is available and what we're capable of. So we can have a new contrasting set point to jump off from. So here, I'll give you an example. Somebody invented plastic, right? And it was an incredible invention. And that invention led to a lot of convenience for the people on the planet. But it also caused a lot of destruction because the plastic doesn't decompose at the same rate as natural objects do or natural, I, I guess, natural elements do on this planet. I'm sorry for my lack of scientific verbiage. But... It did help us a lot, but we also learned more about the planet, more about elements and more about what is needed to have a healthy planet and healthy atmosphere from that. So sometimes something negative or not sometimes always something negative will pop up and it will help propel us forward. OK, so sometimes inventions are great. You come up with the idea to fly. And the Wright brothers did it. And then now we have airplanes across the world. But then we added pollution of all this stuff. There's so much stuff that comes. There's always good and bad that comes with new innovations. OK, like the cell phone. The cell phone was a huge download for the person who received the core concept of the cell phone and computers. But look at how it's impacting us on a societal level. But because of its negative impact, because it also has positive impacts, we are forced to come up with new ideas. And that is how evolution happens. That is how we evolve as a population, as humanity, and we move forward. Otherwise, we just stay stagnant and there's really no point in living. Now, where do these ideas come from? Where do they originate? There's the most basic thing. Collectively on this planet, we have experiences, we have collective experiences. And these collective experiences cause us to have collective desires. When we have a desire for something new, the answer has to come. If you've learned about law of attraction, you know about it. When you ask, it is given. So when we ask for something, it is given. But when we collectively ask for something, 
or have a need that we are desperate for something, the result or the answer or the solution shows up energetically first. And it is basically thrown into our atmosphere. Now, I don't know how that is done. It is obviously an energetic thing. It's obviously something that's beyond what we understand. But what I would like to share is that the answer comes. So think of our atmosphere and think of an answer or a solution or an idea being dropped into the atmosphere for a human to pick up. So what happens is a solution, an invention. Now, all inventions are included in this thing that I'm talking about. A solution is presented but the idea doesn't go into one person's head only. It gets dropped into our energetic atmosphere. Now, it's easier to visualize it as our actual atmosphere, which is a thin layer that covers the planet. But once it gets dropped into the atmosphere, anybody that is solution-based or that is tuned into the right frequency will pick up that invention. It will pop into their mind. Now, here's the problem. The person who gets it will usually take credit for it because they'll say, oh, I had this amazing idea. But the universe knows. The universe knows that people don't necessarily act on the ideas that they have. So what it does is it puts the ideas into the full atmosphere or energetic field of the earth, the electromagnetic field of the earth, so different people will pick it up. Many people will pick up the same concepts all across the globe. Those people that have the same needs. Now, Western and modern countries will have access to Western and modern solutions. And someone in a village will have an answer to something that's more for their lifestyle. So it's not like every single person will pick it up or maybe they will pick it up, but they won't know what to do with it. But the people that could understand the answer will receive it. Multiple people will receive it. And the first person to act on it and have the connections to bring it forth to the public is the one who gets credit for it. So I am 100% sure the idea of the computer, the idea of the cell phone, the idea of the iPhone was not or were not just downloaded to one person. They were given to many, 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 many people. Well, they were just given into the atmosphere. They were given, um, they were added to the atmosphere and the people that were tuned in picked it up, but only a few people had the courage to act on it because it was a new idea. And when you have a new idea, no matter what the new idea is, there's always going to be naysayers telling you that what you're thinking about, what you're dreaming about is just a pipe dream and don't waste your time with it and get back to your regular nine to five or whatever it is that you do. Now, some people don't care. They're visionaries. Visionaries will take the idea that they received from the atmosphere, now that's the most basic aspect of the, or the basic idea of where we can get information from. As you know, we can get information from many, many different layers of reality. But today we're calling this version the atmosphere. It's where there's a collective need for something and the atmosphere gets downloaded, the information that we need to basically receive or it gets uploaded. I don't know. It gets uploaded the information and we need to download it. So I know that many of you had the idea of how amazing it is. The ones of you that are old enough to remember regular snail mail. I know a lot of you had ideas of how wonderful it would be to have faster mail or how many of you thought how cool it would be to make a phone call and see the person that you're talking to. All these people had these desires and the desires created a solution and the answers were given to the atmosphere and certain people went into this state of receiving and receptivity, received it, but the first one to act on it got the credit for it, basically. 
So why am I even saying any of this stuff? How is this relevant to you and your life? How it is relevant to you and your life is whenever you meditate, whenever you have those aha moments in the shower, whenever you're sitting on the toilet and some idea pops into your head, these ideas that seem really big are stuff that you're picking up that's in the air already. It's a result of collective consciousness and its desires. So if you have an idea, instead of saying, oh, that sounds like a good idea, and then seeing it in a magazine or in, on TV or in the internet or an advertisement for it five years later saying, oh, I had that idea five years ago, do something about it. Put it on paper first. It's important to get it out of the head and onto the paper. Now, a lot of people say, I have this idea. I just don't know what to do with it because my mind doesn't work like that. It's not business oriented. It's not creative. There's so many ways that we limit ourselves because we do have limitations when it comes to the parts of our minds that we are used to using. But when you have an idea, put it on paper. Don't just let it just go because it's like a dream. It comes into your head and it disappears. Put it on paper. If you like it, talk about it. Tell people about your idea. Now, so many people are afraid that if they tell someone about the idea, someone's going to steal it. And then all of a sudden they don't do anything about it. And somebody else comes up with the same idea. And it's as if the idea was stolen anyway. So talk about it. Tell people about it and try to get other people on board that can see your vision, that have the talents and skills that you do not have to be able to make your idea a reality. Now, am I asking every single person in this forum or whoever you are to start becoming an inventor? Kind of, I am kind of saying that. I'm saying if you have an idea and it's big, put it out there. Don't just sit in it. It's been put in the atmosphere for one of us to pick up. And let that person be you because there is a reason why you received it. So some of you will resonate with this big time because you know exactly what I'm talking about. And some of you will say, oh, I never have good ideas. If you don't have big ideas, it's because you're too caught up in the mundane. You're too caught up in survival mode. You're too caught up with paying the bills that you don't really give yourself enough of a chance or time to like release all the clutter to receive information. But most of us that treat ourselves to moments of silence and tranquility will receive downloads, will receive information of ideas that the world could benefit from. Now, you can't go in there thinking, I'm going to get this idea so I can get rich. When you are thinking about money and you're trying to come up with some way to get rich and make a lot of money or become famous, you're not in the right frequency. You just have to be in a really receptive state so you can just receive ideas that the people really want to hear. So basically, all I wanted to tell you today was that there is information being thrown into our atmosphere all the time, and it is an answer to a collective question and a need. And many of you will receive the downloads only one or two of you will actually do something about it. That's why I came up with the idea and the solution to write it down and talk about it and get people on board and see where it goes. Because if an idea was thrown in the atmosphere by something greater than you, and it's being desired by many people, something greater than you, then let me tell you, the path to its fruition will also be orchestrated by something greater than you. So you're never alone trying to figure out how to do stuff. If it's a true download from the atmosphere, you will have support. This episode is pretty much over. It might have meant nothing to some of you, but I know for a few of you, this will change the trajectory of your life because you will no longer look at these crazy ideas that you have as these crazy ideas that you have. You will think of them as incredible, magical, divine knowledge that you're being gifted with that if you don't act on it, you're not going to get anything out of it and someone else will take the credit. And I'll give you a quick example before I wrap up this episode. 
1995, I had a near-death experience. I was downloaded a lot of information. I wrote a ton of little books on how to release stress and find happiness and how to look at life differently and how to change your perspective. Guess what? All that stuff sat in a book in my bookshelf and never touched again. And at that time, the ideas were revolutionary. If my book was published today, which it will never be published now because there's a thousand more people that have written books just like it, it would be nothing. But had it been published in 1995, it would have been revolutionary. But at that time, having resources to print a book or create stuff or get your voice out there was very difficult. And now it's easy. You have the internet, you have the whole world at your disposal. So don't let a good idea go to waste and take advantage of atmospheric downloads, okay? There's so much more to this. You will discover so much more in this season. This season is just fun and all about receiving information. And this particular idea was not even mentioned in my book, The Intuition Bible, shameless plug, that, oh wait, this is not even the final copy. I just got the final copy. Uh, the Intuition Bible is on pre-sale right now on Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, everywhere. And uh, Audible, yes, Audible for all of you that do not want to read and on Kindle. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. Have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next episode. And I hope you enjoyed the pink in the background, although... I know most of your listeners are not viewers, but who knows? All right. Bye. Have a good day.